Hey folks, my name is Matt. I'm with Full Alarm Fire Training, and today we're going to be discussing forcible entry and halogen bar physics with the entry level firefighter in mind. This is the 30 inch Pro Bar Halogen. It is constructed of a single piece of drop forged alloy steel and is an adaptation of Chief Hugh Halligan's original Halligan spec. It serves as the industry standard specification for most of the fire service, including many of the largest fire departments in the world, such as the FDNY. Next, we are going to discuss the parts of the halogen. First, you have the shaft, which is the solid steel tube that runs the length of the tool. On one end, you have the adds, which the IFSTA curriculum refers to as the wedge, and on the other end, the forks. On the same side as the adds, at a 90 degree angle to the adds, you have the spike. This is also commonly referred to as the pike or the pick. The standard adds length is six inches and two inches wide. When used correctly, it will exert a 15 to one mechanical advantage onto the locking mechanism and the door. The industry standard forks are also six inches long and one inch thick. There are several other halogen style tools on the market which offer a thicker fork. While this does provide more wedging mechanism, they can be significantly more difficult to set. The term bevel represents the outside convex curve to the forks and is an important piece of terminology. When the bevel is oriented towards the jam, you can achieve a 13 and a half to one mechanical advantage. Alternatively, when the bevel is oriented towards the door, you can achieve a 13 and a quarter to one mechanical advantage. So you see a lot of bad striking form on the fire ground and on the training ground. I've seen all the time, you have firefighters that want to come in and they're winding up almost like they're swinging for the fences of the team off on a par five. When we go to strike a tool, we want to try to maintain a position that number one is going to allow us a lot of accuracy, plus it's going to keep the head of the axe perpendicular to the adze. That's going to prevent any debilitating injuries that come in on the wrist or the hand. Also, by being down on one knee, it's going to allow me to be able to walk with the tool. As they start to walk the forks around the jam, I can shuffle around to stay in line. We're going to discuss three commands that we use when we're setting the forks. We're gonna use hit, drive, and stop. Hit is just one single hit. You can use a, a, a lineup tab, but it's just one single hard hit. Drive means I'm gonna hit continuously until they say stop, and then stop obviously means stop. Hit. The next thing that we're gonna demonstrate is striking, but in a confined and low visibility environment. You would see this if we were uh, operating interior and there was a door that we needed to get in. In order to do this, Firefighter Barry is gonna throw the halogen up over their shoulder like this, and I'm gonna maintain contact with the halogen so that way I can feel the halogen as it begins to walk around the jam. Hit, hit, hit. There's a couple steps that we need to consider when we go to force an inward swinging front door. First things first, we need to size the door up. That's gonna start as we're approaching the door. Obviously here you see that we have an exposed door stop, which indicates that the door swings inward or into the compartment that we're trying to access. In our size up, we've hopefully identified what the locking mechanisms are. We'll say that this is just a residential key and knob and deadbolt setup. First thing we wanna do is try to make sure that it's not unlocked because no one looks stupider than forcing a door that was already unlocked. You see a lot of people harp on sounding the door. This is good in a commercial setting, but on a residential setting, it's probably not necessary and it's more likely to compromise whatever that front window is, which we want to avoid doing anyway. So once I've sized it up, I've tried it. Now we need to attempt to gap the door. Gap the door means that we're going to make a gap in between the door stop and the door that's going to hopefully allow us to either set our, our ads or our forks in there. 
A lot of people get hung up on the gap. Keep in mind, if this is a residential front door, this is likely going to be a pretty thin wood doorstop. And what we see a lot of times is that firefighters, they get hung up on the weather stripping that runs inside the crack right here, and then this wooden doorstop, and they end up working way too hard just to try to get the ads in for a gap. And then when they go to crush down, all that energy is exerted backwards onto the doorstop and it blows the doorstop out. This isn't a big deal. This can be easily overcome by just getting it out of the way. Now you actually have a pretty nice gap there to work with, but it's extra energy. So I'd say after one or two tries, if you're not getting a good gap with the ads, just jam the fork. In. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna discuss gapping the door to start. One of the best ways to approach gapping the door is we're gonna put our foot up against the door and we're gonna flex it. We can also put our shoulder into the door to flex it a little bit. This is hopefully gonna separate the door from that weather stripping just a little bit. Now what we see in the training environment a lot is a lot of firefighters wanna to start to drive the ads in right here with the ax. That's wasted effort. Keep in mind, we still have a difficult job to do once we get inside. We don't wanna waste unnecessary effort on the front yard. If the door is too tight that we're not able to get a gap, by just setting the tool in like this. If this is a wooden door, we're just gonna immediately default to jamming the forks in. So I'm gonna flex a door. I'm gonna put my shoulder into it to flex it further. We're gonna set those ads in, and now I'm gonna gap. So we achieve a 15 to one mechanical advantage onto the locking, the locking mechanism and the door when we have a crushing motion applied to the ads. So in this case, because the orientation of the spike, I'm gonna crush downwards. If this was a door where the door handle was oriented to the left side of the door, I automatically know that when I approach it, I'm gonna set my ads a little bit lower so I can put my shoulder and crush upwards. So I'm gonna throw those ads in there and I'm gonna crush downwards. I'm gonna come out on the far back of the tool. And remember, we're exerting a 15 to one mechanical advantage on that door. Okay. Right here we have a really good gap. So we're gonna maintain that progress. Firefighter Barry's gonna come in. They're gonna just throw the X blade right in here and they're gonna capture the progress. Awesome. Now we have a really good gap. We're gonna throw the forks in and we're gonna set the tool. When we set the halogen, that means that we're going to use striking that we demonstrated in that last video to set the forks into the point where we're not gonna lose the tool when we go to force it. That's gonna be about an inch up from the crotch. We're gonna start with the most mechanical advantage. That's the bevel, this outside curve of the tool that we discussed, towards the door jam. When we do that, we achieve a 13.5 to one mechanical advantage. The downfall with that is that we have reduced throw because of the ads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this and then we're gonna switch to bevel towards the door which is gonna give us slightly less mechanical advantage at 13 a quarter to one, but it's gonna give us the full throw of the tool. ready to force it at this point but just for demonstration I'm going to set it in the opposite way that way we have the full throw of the tool when we do go to force it go ahead and drive it Stop. when we go to force it for an inward swinging door we're pushing the halogen in we want to come all the way out on the shaft and it helps to go open palms so we don't crush our knuckles into the door I have it pretty much busted right here. I can just capture this with my knee. We're gonna throw our ads in, finish the door off. Now, really important next step here is we're immediately gonna drop down and we wanna do what's called our 10% search. 10% of our fire victims are found immediately in that path of egress. So we're gonna drop down to a knee real fast. We're gonna just look underneath that smoke. Remember when that door opens, if there's smoke, we're gonna get a little bit of lift. We wanna use that to our advantage. Drop down, look, see if we can see someone laying immediately in the path of egress. If we don't see them right away, we're immediately controlling that door. For an outward swinging door, we're gonna utilize the same set of steps with a couple considerations. 
Understand that an outward swinging door sounding it is less likely to be beneficial. It may help identify some additional locking mechanisms, but if it's any kind of fortified door, all we're really going to be feeling is it hitting that stop. So just like in an inward swinging door, we want to gap it. And in this case, we can gap it by setting the ads in. So firefighter Barry's going to come up. Hit. 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 Stop. You notice you heard a different sound there? That's the ads finally hitting the door stop there. We can't drive it in any farther unless we start to walk the tool out and around. If this is a hollow core metal door or if it's a wooden door, we can crush up and down to try to eat up some of that material and give us a better gap. The one really important thing to consider is if it is any kind of metal door, there's a seam that runs down the inside of the door. By crushing up and down, we are exerting that 15 to one mechanical advantage, but we're also really likely to catch that seam and work our ads inside the seam into the inside of the door, which is gonna mean that all of our effort is completely useless at that point. We have to start at a new spot. So I can crush up and down once or twice, but once our tool is set here, I'm pretty much ready to pull. Remember, inward swinging door, we push the halogen inward. Outward swinging door, we're gonna pull the halogen outward. It's really important for this step that I'm stepping into a position of balance and stability, because what we don't wanna do is pull this and end up on an off balance foot and go sailing off the front porch. At this point in time, we can rotate the spike in there as well. And remember, the same thing applies. We're going to do our 10% search, try to look underneath that thermal layer, and then immediately control the door. That concludes our video of forcible entry and halogen bar physics. Once again, I'm Matt with Full Alarm Fire Training. And remember, stay smart out there.